And welcome in to a Thursday edition of the Backstage Pass. Of course, always busy here with a pair of shows coming up today and then one tomorrow. And then definitely we uh, take the weekend off as we get ready for more shows coming up next week and into the uh, Winnie Rice Festival weekend. Hard to believe the fall weather has set in now. It feels good outside and definitely excited to be here. We're live on YouTube on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel and, of course, Facebook Backstage Pass 409. Uh, you can follow the interview there. And, of course, uh, look who's back in the saddle with me. Nick Canizal is back here. It's been a while, well. man. Work, work, work. <laughs> I tell you what. It's, it's, it's been a while, no doubt. No. Uh, again, uh, presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. I'm pleased to welcome in Nashville recording artists. It's mine to make, and that's the single out there across all the digital platforms. As Anna McElroy joins us here. Anna, what's going on? What's up, y'all? whole bunch what of nuts. Working <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> Staying busy, huh? Yeah. Trying to. <laughs> trying to keep my schedule as packed as I can. <laughs> That's always good. That's a oh, good yeah. thing, too. Well, we got a couple of great songs today. We'll talk a lot about the single, which is out there across all the digital platforms uh, to purchase out there or stream wherever you stream out there. Well, I tell you what, take me back to the beginning. How did you kind of know when music was the calling? Everybody says this happened at a young age. We got bit by the bug. So when did it kind of happen for you? Yeah. So um, I would say music has just always been in my life. So, you know, I've never really been without it. So growing up, I was always singing around the house. Um, I grew up singing in choir at church. So that was from when I was as young as I could be to be in the choir. And then up until around 2016 um, is whenever I didn't really, that's when I started to do gigs and shows like that. Um, I picked up a guitar around 12, 13, but I had like terrible stage fright. So I wouldn't sing in front of anybody. I wouldn't play in front of anybody. I would play in the very back corner of my closet with every single door closed in between, so nobody can hear me. Um, and then one of my friends started to play out in front of people in 2016. And so I would always kind of live through her and go and watch her shows. And it was one of hers down in uh, Daphne, Alabama, back home. And I was in the middle of eating dinner and she's like, Anna's gonna come and sing a song. And I was like, no, she's not. <laughs> that happened. But of course, you know, everybody's like, yeah, clapping. And so I didn't have a choice. So I went up there and it was probably the scariest moment of my life. But after, you know, I sat back down and I was like, you know, I think this is definitely what I want to do for the rest of my life, even though it was absolutely terrifying. And I still I still struggle with stage fright to this day. I'm just better at forcing myself to get through it. Um, but I feel like that was the really the moment of, you know, OK, you, this is what you want to do, like figure out how to get better and figure out how to get started with your own line of your own career. So that's whenever mm -hmm. mom would go around and call any and every restaurant and bar and be like, you know, can she come and sing? And they would, uh, you know, they'd always be like, you know, she can come in and sing like a few songs and then we'll see if we want to book her back. You it was always, have, you always have to prove yourself. So um, once we get past, once we got past all of that um, ended up being like, I'd have three to four shows a week that were like three hours, four hours, some from six to nine, some from the afternoon, 12 to four, some until like 1 2 o'clock AM, which was exhausting. But, um, you know, I had to do all that stuff to prepare for what was to come next, which at the time I had no idea what was coming next. Um, I was just kind of doing whatever I thought I needed to do. Um, and then it wasn't until around, October or November of 2018 that I met um, Keith and Adrian Falsey, and that's who I've been working with for the past three years and just, you know, really writing and just recording and getting the, you know, this big package put together and, mm -hmm. um, you know, learning more about me and I'm still growing one as an artist and as a person. And so it's, you know, we're just still just in the grind of it all. So mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. Who, who were some of your big, big musical influences when you were growing up? Who were you jamming to, you know, uh, you know, as a kid? And then as you made your way up to middle school, high school, who yeah. were all the, those, those influences there? I feel like I've always had a wide variety of music that I listened to. Of course, I love Taylor Swift, um, Carrie Underwood, Miranda Lambert, Faith Hill. Loved listening to Adele. Um, I was obsessed with Justin Bieber. Um, <laughs> I think every Bieber. girl in America was obsessed with Justin oh, Bieber. Yeah, I mean, like I swam <laughs> a little bit, but <laughs> but I feel like it was, you know, I would say mainly I listened to Taylor Swift and Carrie Underwood and Miranda Lambert the most. Um, so I would I would give most of my credit to those guys, probably. You know, Dolly Parton especially, and it's like her character and just you know <sighs> she has and how she draws everybody together as one. 
um, you know, Reba McIntyre and all these other people. So I have a, I have a bunch of people that have had an influence on my career, I would say. I like that too. And of course, a lot of the artists we talked to here on the program, you know, before they kind of find their own sound out there, uh, they'll pick up and do, like you said, kind of call the bars and do some gigs and uh, the demo tapes and get themselves out there and just work hard and go through uh, the grind, which you talked about. Was there some, kind of some favorite cover songs to play? And if so, what, what were some of them before? And I guess, when did you kind of discover the sound that you wanted, the, the Anna McElroy sound? Yeah, uh, I would say my go-to songs that I would always play would be... Um, Definitely Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. That was my go-to mm -hmm. karaoke song. If someone was like, sing karaoke, I was like, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to sing. <laughs> um, I would do, what is it? It's a song by the, Leave the Pieces by the Wreckers. That's always a go-to for me also. Mm -hmm. uh, Gunpowder and Lead, Miranda Lambert. Um, and then, you know, I would play just a variety of all of their songs. People would always be like, okay, this is like the eighth Miranda Lambert song you've sang. Do you have any other artists that you can cover? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize that. Um, and so it wasn't until I really started to work with Keith and Adrian that I started to figure out my sound. And I feel like it kind of just organically came about just, you know, we've written close to, I mean, written about 50 plus songs. So over the course of those 50 songs, you know, it kind of just dwindles into this similar sound that you don't even realize is, coming together until you go back and listen to everything and you do hear those similarities in all the songs. So I feel like um, that's definitely still, I'm still been it, like finalizing and finishing what my sound would be, but I also feel like my sound um, has a lot of different things to it. Like my songs go from super duper country to old timey country to a little bit of a rockish vibe to a little bit of pop and uh, just a bunch of different things formed into whatever my said that is my sound i guess <laughs> let me ask you something here so you know these last 18 months have been just crazy as turn everybody upside down the music world upside down and you know brandon and i we love going to concerts and we're finally now starting you know get i don't know if you want to call it back to normal but what is the last 18 months have have been for you and and tried to uh you know with with concerts everything shut down at that time and tried to kind of reinvent yourself uh, through you know social media and streaming services to make sure that your fans still are still getting the music that, that they want to hear. How, how did that all come about? And what was that like? Uh, it was 2020 was a terrible year. That was a year that I wish I would have taken all that free time to, you know, improve in little skills like guitar playing or learning a new instrument or writing more and things like that. But unfortunately, I turned inward and just kind of shut down. Um, you know, my managers are they're older and I care a lot about their health and their well-being. And so I never wanted to put them at risk. So we pretty much had just months and months of nothing. And um, we ended up having an opportunity for this um, TV series that came about that's out of Nashville called Nashville's Next Best of Three. And they had heard my song, Real Tractors Are Green, and they loved it. And they were wanting it to be used as the theme song for the TV show, nice. as well as asking if I would like to be a judge on there also. And so I was like, um, yeah, that's freaking sick. I would love that. That's like, that's I've never experienced anything like that. Um, and so that was towards the end of 2020. So that was kind of where I think things started to start to rise again for me and um, lift me back up was having something to do because before that, I mean, I wouldn't sing for like two weeks straight. I would just sit mm -hmm. on the couch. Just, I felt worthless. I was like, there's nothing I can do because I can't do music. And I was like, okay, so this sucks. But um, after the TV show, I feel like, you know, there, that was whenever we started to get back into just writing again which helped a lot. That's like my form of therapy. So um, it was nice to kind of get all that out, which it was hard to get back into the swing of things also because going so long without singing and practicing and then having to go back into the studio and they're like, okay, let's record this song today. And I'm like, I don't even know if I know how to sing anymore. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm scared to even open my mouth. Um, so it definitely took time to get used to working a lot again and trying to figure out what it was we were doing before because what we were doing before i mean everything's completely different now so um we really just started writing again at the like earliest that we could and then whenever the vaccine became available we all got that and then now it's i'm over here every single day working which is so mm -hmm. nice um i definitely love my downtime <laughs> especially but um 
yeah, I, it's just, it's been a crazy 18 months. It's just been a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. Um, but being able to release my uh, first two singles this year has definitely been the icing on the cake, I would say. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're very good singles, not just singles, but very good <laughs> singles out there across all the platforms. Uh, Mind to Make is the current one, and Real Tractors are green. I tell you what, uh, let's play some music here on the Backstage Pass with Anna McElroy. Of course, you give her a follow out there across all her socials and uh, go purchase the music out there while you're at it too at the same time. Let's do, uh, we're gonna do, I guess, one of two today. And definitely, I know people like, hey, I wanna hear it, mine to make, we're gonna we're gonna get to it. Uh, <laughs> but definitely up first, Anna, it's your choice and let's, let's uh, get after it, let's do it. All right, what are we gonna start with? I have Keith over here, you can't see him. Hi, right. Keith. Keith. He's, he's <laughs> guitar though. There's a dent in my bank account every time I go out all night. There's a tear in my favorite jeans, hope it means I had a good time. I used to be my own worst enemy, digging my own grave. Now I'm owning it all, I won't trip if I fall, cause they're my mistakes. They're mine to make. If I drink too much, if I fall in love and I mess it up, they're mine to make. If I live too fast and I don't look back, yeah, what's wrong with that? They're mine to make. Hey, you live and you learn, you can crash, but don't burn. After all, it's my heart to break, yeah. Yeah, they're mine too, they're mine too, they're mine to make. Like the bed that I shouldn't be sleeping and watching the sun rise. And at 2 a.m. drunk, dial I made, that's just who I was last night. I'm right in my wrongs and my weak is my strong and that's okay. I am who I am till I change it again, but those are my mistakes and they're mine to make. If I drink too much, if I fall in love and I mess it up, they're mine to make. If I live too fast and I don't look back, yeah, what's wrong with that? They're mine to make. Hey, you live and you learn, you can crash, but don't burn. After all, it's my heart to break, yeah. Yeah, they're mine too, they're mine too, they're mine to make, and that's just what I'm doing, after all we're human, living, going through it, so I'll say a prayer and be fine with my right now, there's no need to slow down, I'll figure it all out, all I'm trying to say, is they're mine to make, Whoa, the mind of me. Whoa, the mind of me. If I drink too much, if I fall in love and I mess it up, the mind of me. If I live too fast and I don't look back, yeah, what's wrong with that? The mind of me. Hey, you live and you learn, you can crash, but don't burn. After all, it's my heart to break, yeah. Yeah, they're mine too, they're mine too, they're mine to make. Oh, oh, oh they're mine to make. Whoa, they're mine to make. Whoa. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-hosts Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. I always say on the show, we create multiple new fans and you just got a new follower out there here from the... Uh, 
Grayson here. Donnie tunes in a lot. Just one of our great listeners and viewers out there. Great song, new followers. So there you go. It's, it's easy enough to create that. Yeah. The price stage bass. And if I can do just one, I've I've done my job. But Brandon Morrell, uh, Dan Gonzalez back here. It's the backstage pass again, powered by the Sports Guys Podcast.com. And of course, week three of the National Football League coming up here in a few weeks. ESPN's Freddie Coleman is going to join us here to break down some NFL games too. That'll be a lot, a lot of fun too. Don't forget uh, today, Hunter Thomas coming up about 4 30 or so and then tomorrow josh setterfield here on the backstage pass so hey when i first heard that song anna i said to myself man it just has hit written all over it number one top five and all these charts uh tell me all about it lay it lay it down i want to know everything about this song because uh this had to be a fun to write or co-write and this had to be just a special song for you to put together yeah for sure uh this is definitely one of my favorite songs that i've uh written so far um i've co-written both songs that are out right now and the majority of all of my other music with Keith and Adrian. Um, and then their two sons are also uh, singer songwriters. Um, and so they always come over and write with us whenever they can. Their oldest son lives in LA. So he flies in and then we'll get a couple dates together. So um, I think this is the, one of the very first times I'd ever written with their kids also. So this is a five person kind of deal, which is also, it's so much fun um, just to also see so many like, talented musicians and like how they work and how quick they are and how much I learned from just being in the room with all of them is really cool. Um, and I think it was Keith. He had this title called uh, mind to make. And mm -hmm. we were just like, that's really cool. You know, um, his son, Jamie had this really cool guitar part that he was working with. And so it all just kind of, you know, Oh, we like that. Keep that. Oh, we like that. Keep that. And then it was, okay, what does mind to make mean? And that's when we were like, maybe it's, you know, my mistakes are mine to make. And so it's really just all about how we make mistakes. And I'm like mm -hmm. drawing light to the fact that everybody makes mistakes. Like nobody's perfect. Um, you have to make mistakes in order to grow and to learn. So um, I think the song really just, it paints the picture of, you know, you shouldn't have any shame that you're going to mess up in life because it's inevitable and you're going to. So you should just like mm -hmm. come to terms with that yeah. and, uh, you know, move past it as you know however you feel necessary to move past these mistakes but know that everybody is making mistakes as well and that you shouldn't be so hard on yourself for doing these things that you're just like dang it like i messed up again but that's okay because now i learned another lesson from that and now i know better for the next time in order of like you know what not to do or what to do differently um so I feel like it's very on brand for me also because growing up, you know, I have an older brother and so he'd always get in trouble first. And it was mm -hmm. like, your brother's mistakes, but I didn't want to do that. So I'd go back mm -hmm. and behind him and I would do whatever he would do. And it's like, my parents would be like, you just saw us get mad at him. Why would you do that? And I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe I would have had a different outcome or experience mm -hmm. with it. So I just wanted to give it a shot for myself to see what it's like. Um, so I know I like to learn from my own mistakes. Um, so that's really just, it's very on brand. I feel like it's something that a lot of people would like to hear and feel like it could be comforting for some people that are so hard on themselves when they mess up and they think it's like just the end of the world, but it's just another stepping stone to get better at, or to get into that better place that like you're wanting to reach. I feel like maybe. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you've been singing for such a long time. What's, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received about music in the music industry? Um, I would say, what always stuck with me whenever I was starting out is to always try and put yourself in the room with people that are just so much better than you as scary as that might be. And it is terrifying. <laughs> so terrifying. It's intimidating and it's uncomfortable at times because, you know, I you know I get in the room with people and whenever I was first in the room with Keith and Adrian, I almost felt like unworthy. I was like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I don't even know what I'm doing in here, you know, but when you put yourself in the room with those people that are better than you, it's inevitable that you're going to learn something. And so, you know, if I'm in the room with somebody worse than me, that's not going to help me grow in any way. Mm -hmm. So I've always tried to put myself in the position to where I am the underdog. So I can always walk out with another thing um, to work on and to know um, confidence is something I've always struggled with. I still struggle with it a lot. Um, so I still don't have really much advice on how to get past that because I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> but I would also say um, to just, you know, keep your head down and focus really more so on yourself and what you're doing. You know, you shouldn't focus on, you know, where other people are at in their career and what they're doing because everybody has a different thing going on. Everybody makes it 
to where they're trying to go in a different way. Um, and I think the more you focus on other people and what they do, the less you focus on yourself and what you need to be doing. Um, I think it draws a lot more insecurities for yourself if you focus on other people, you know, because it's like, oh, well, I did that same thing, but they got all this success with it, but I didn't. So now I'm down on myself instead of, you know, I saw this quote that said, you can't compare your chapter one to somebody's chapter 10. And mm -hmm. that really stuck with me sure. because I know I struggle a lot with, you know, looking at all my friends and all their success. And I'm so proud and happy for them. But there's like deep down, it's like, oh, like, I wonder what that's like. You know, I haven't experienced that yet, but my time will come. You know, I have to start somewhere. I'm so new in town. Like I just released my first song. Like it's, I not can't just snap my fingers and all this stuff just like happens. So it's really coming to terms with patience and the mm -hmm. understanding that everything's going to fall into place when it's supposed to and to just keep your head down and just work and compete with yourself, you know, be better than you were the day before and do something to make you better tomorrow. Um, so I would say really just focus on you and don't, don't worry about everybody else and especially other people's opinions also, because there's always going to be more people that are going to cut you down than more people that believe in you. So um, when you find your circle of mm -hmm. people that do support you and believe in you, that's, that's what really keeps you going. No doubt. And great advice out there for new artists out there who are taking that jump and taking the gamble on themselves uh, for musicians and to become professional musicians at the same time. And just uh, they always say here on the show, I've heard it many times, Anna, Nashville is a 10 year town. And the more I hear that, that is the truth out there, too. So good perspective. I mean, you're not. I want to dive into this one. Let's play it first. I love this song. And uh, Keith sent me a video today. I was just jamming out to it, uh, playing it, and having a good time. Uh, you mentioned it, the title earlier, Real Tractors Are Green. And I could kind of love that title of it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun uh, with this song, too, as well. So let's let's have you play it. We'll come back and talk about it and break it down here on, oh. on the show here. Again, presented by... Bangtail Whiskey, and of course, uh, Hunter Thomas coming up here a little bit about uh, 4.30 or so here on the uh, Backstage Pass. And, and Anna, it's all yours. All right, yeah. let's go. <laughs> I tried moving to the city. I wouldn't feel like that, no. Call my dad, say, Daddy, come and get me. Go on and bring me on back home. I miss my bare feet on the banks of muddy waters. I miss being the farmer's daughter. Well, real roads are made of dirt. Sundays are made for church. And everything we got is all we need. Real whiskey is Kentucky rye. Red, white, and blue still fly down every small town. One stop to Lane Street. The only place that I call home will be when real tractors are green. Real tractors are green. I tried riding on a subway. Without the stars, I get lost. I tried walking in stilettos, yeah. But that really ain't my walk. I miss my bare feet on the banks of muddy waters, yeah. Just take my heart back where I started. Well, real roads are made of dirt. Sundays are made for church. And everything we got is all we need. Real whiskey is Kentucky Rock, red, white, and blue still fly down every small town, one stop to Lane Street. The only place that I call home will be where real tractors are green, real tractors are green. I tried moving to the city. I wouldn't feel like that, no. Just take me home. Where? Real roads are made of dirt. Sundays are made for church. And everything we got is all we're ever gonna need. Real whiskey is Kentucky Rock. Red, white, and blue still fly down every small town. One stop to Lane Street. The 
only place that I call home will be where real tractors are green. Real tractors are green. Real tractors are green. Real tractors are green. Oh, yeah. The bang tail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And we're doing that here with Anna McElroy coming up here in a little bit. Hunter Thomas is going to join us in the tomorrow. Uh, Josh Centerfield here on the program. Looking forward to more and more uh, talent out there. I was just telling Nick during the break, I said, man, uh, terrific vocals. She's got a fantastic no future in this industry. And I, I just love the control and the power and just the, the poise in her voice. It's just beautiful. And, and it's uh, the tone is amazing, especially for that uh, particular song. Real tractors are green. And I guess, I guess they are. You know, I used to grow up on a farm, so I could say, yeah, I had, had a green yeah, tractor. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's break that one down. Tell me all about this one and how this, uh, this came about. So this is um, probably the coolest thing, um, coolest song and how it came about, I would say. So to take it back to... Um, the end of 2019, we were on a trip in Denmark working with a Danish producer that Keith and Adrian are very good friends with. And Keith is from Minneapolis, and he had a friend that had a friend that was wanting to surprise their friend <laughs> with a trip. <laughs> so he thought it would be cool if Keith and Adrian would, um, you know, play a little show for her because they have hits in country music. So it would just kind of be a really cool experience. She'd never been to Nashville. She loves country music. And so... Uh, you know, we get back from Denmark and then they went to LA to visit their kids for a couple days. And then when they got back, Adrian got sick. So I was living in Tuscaloosa, Alabama at the time. And Keith called me and was like, I have this show tomorrow. I can't play it by myself. Like, is there any way you can, you know, sing Adrian's songs and her parts? We'll do a couple of your songs. Also, I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I'll be there in the morning. No worries. And so uh, the people we ended up playing the song for, you know, they loved what we were playing. They were super, super appreciative of mm -hmm. us taking the time to play for them. And after that, you know, I thought it was the worst show I'd ever played. I was so insecure because I had just learned these songs before. So I was like, oh, my gosh, like I'm just ruining this whole thing. And so um, we leave there and come to find out, you know, Keith had been communicating with them and they were like, you know, we love y'all's music. Let us know if there's you know, anything we could do to help or if there's anything that we could like, you know, collaborate on, you know, they would tell us about their business, which um, they're in the agricultural business and their friend um, Kelly Arts had, you know, this phrase that he came up with called real tractors are green. And so us as songwriters hearing that we're like, hmm, like there could probably be something there for a country song. And so we took the chances to come back to the studio and sit down and really kind of just you know, messing around with all these different ideas and how we could, you know, make this as organically of a country song as like we could, like while using what they had as an advertising campaign, we saw as maybe a song title. So, um, you know, we came out to the studio, we sat down and uh, it took us probably like an hour or so to get the chorus written, which is, you know, pretty long time of sitting there. And it was just like, we don't even know like what we're going to say. And then, you know, eventually, it all just kind of came together. And then as soon as we got the chorus figured out, it which paints a picture of just back home and what, what it's like before, you know, the world gets to you. And it's like, mm -hmm. you didn't need a bunch of things. You just wanted to be outside or with your family or just doing the little things. And now it's like, you think you need all these huge things. And in reality, you, you really don't, uh, in my opinion. So, um, you know, we get the chorus figured out and then it was probably maybe 20 minutes that it took to figure out the rest of the the lyrics and the verses and everything like that. And it just kind of strangely flowed out. 
and that rarely happens. And we finished it and we kind of were singing it back and we're just like, guys, like, it's a pretty good song. Like, I don't know, but I loved it. It was, I love the vibe of it. I love the story it was saying. I felt like it, you know, really resonated with me also. Granted, my dad wasn't a farmer, spoiler mm -hmm. alert, I know, but, um, you know, I did grow up outdoors and I did grow up around a lot of people who, um, you know, their parents are farmers and, you know, I grew up playing in the mud more than anything. And so, um, I think it's, it's just a, it's a feel good song and yeah. uh, it's, it's changed my life in so many ways, especially, you know, at the TV show, um, that is, it was my very first single. I've been wanting to release a mm -hmm. song since I even knew how to carry a note. And so like <laughs> that song out is like, crazy so uh it's just that's it's just a cool song you know it came out so mm -hmm. good for something that it's just really cool how everybody came together and just kind of fell in our lap so we just took it in rain with it anna you you're you know extremely busy person uh with music and everything else but i want to talk about outside of music what are some of your hobbies you'd like to do on a day-to-day -day basis and hey what do, you, what do you like to do outside of music and and when you're not in the studio so I spend all of my time with my roommates and, you know, our, their dogs. They're like my sisters and best friends. We do everything together. Um, typically during the days, so we'll like to go on, if not one walk, we'll go on two walks, just like to these different places. Um, I love to do absolutely nothing. I'm a big homebody. So if I have the opportunity to stay on the couch, that is where you'll find me. Um, but during the summer and even also during the colder times, we have friends that have land down on the Harpeth river here in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so we will go down and hang out at the river. And so that's kind of like the safe haven where you just go and you can just sit back and relax. You know, it's just so beautiful. It's a little bank that's right on the river. And during the summer, people just back their trucks up and we'll just put, you know, baseball lawn chairs right there in the water and just sit there and pass the guitar around all day. And, sing some songs and just hang mm -hmm. out and relax. Um, it's very like family oriented place also, which is really cool. And then, uh, you know, during the winter fall, we'll have bonfires down there and we'll just do the same thing, except instead of passing it around lawn chairs in the water, we pass it around a fire. So, you know, it's just a place to just relax and do nothing. Um, I go out occasionally with my friends, but I, I prefer to stay in the majority of the time, but I am capable of having a good time. Just not. All <laughs> yeah. Hey, that I hear you on that. I hear you on that. I, I just, oh, it's like when you do stuff twenty four seven. It's like I just want to lay down. I don't yeah, it just wears you out. You oh, just like you just want a day to relax. Yeah. 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 I've okay. had a few of those too. Yeah. After, especially, uh, she talked about mistakes and, and mine to make as being a first time dad it, it having a 17 month, 18 month old at, at the house. It, it, uh, it wore you out through the week. And this week she got oh, sick. So I was putting on your music and just jamming out to a lot of the artist music that I received for the show. And just kind of like saying, you know, by nine o'clock, I'm, I'm a homebody. I'm, I'm bored. Now. I don't go out and that kind of stuff much anymore right. because of being a, it's like 9 30. Let's just get there. No yeah. doubt. All right. I'm going to throw a couple more at you in the rapid fire segment here. We did the fun question here. All right. Favorite drink, uh, I guess, to wind up or to wind down? What do you like to sip on? Hmm. I love wine. Okay. Any, nice. wine. Or actually, I will do without Moscato. It's a little too sweet for me, but mm -hmm. uh, I do love wine. Um, so that's usually my go to. Red <laughs> Cab Mar uh, Merlot, what? Uh, more of a cab. Okay. Yeah, my mom's big on Merlot, so I will drink Merlot when I'm with her. So. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what what can you cook? And uh, if you if you do cook, what's your what's your go to to that? What's your Ooh. favorite food? So I have actually I get my cooking skills from my mom. I would say, granted, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a baker. I burn a lot of desserts. I can't mm -hmm. do anything like that. But I can cook some good dinners. And my go to would probably be. Um, Either an avocado salmon, which is just literally salmon with a diced up avocado on top. Mm -hmm. That's fancy. Um, or like, uh, what is it? Bruschetta, bruschetta chicken? Yes. Hey, that it's is so good. Chocolate what are you chicken? talking about? Yes. That yeah. is really good. <laughs> really oh, <yeah>. good. <laughs> Love good stuff right there. All right. Favorite shows to binge watch. What have you kind of been into lately? So right now, actually, Yellowstone, I mm -hmm. mistakenly decided to start it over for the third time last night. And I was, <laughs> I think, a.m. I couldn't stop. 
And it was like, still watching. I think it asked me that like four times. And I was like, yes, I'm still watching. I was like, this is the best part, you know? <laughs> so I would say Yellowstone is my my binge show right now, especially because the, the new season, season four is coming out for that show in November. So I got to make Ooh. sure I'm really up to date with all the details. So that's my binge show. <laughs> what about, what's your dream vacation? I would say South Africa. Why is that? I would love to just like go through like a safari thing and see all the animals and be surrounded with them and their like natural habitats and all that stuff. And just, yeah. um, I feel mm -hmm. like you know, from pictures and everything I've seen, it's a beautiful place. You know, it's also a place where you could do, you know, some sort of like mission work while you're there and, you know, yeah. help out around um, as well as, you know, enjoying all the other luxuries that, you know, they po probably have down there. I haven't done much research, but the research, mm -hmm. research that I have done definitely is a place that I've always wanted to go. I've had a few friends that had the opportunity to study abroad over there also. And just oh, wow. hearing how great their experience was, just, it made me want to go even more, but I don't have the money for that right now. So that's probably <laughs> made out <my> own. <laughs> I love that too. Love that. All right. Uh, coffee drinker. What goes in the coffee? Oh my gosh, I'm the worst at ordering coffee. So I usually, if I'm with our roommate, I just say whatever she ordered. But mm -hmm. when I put out her, I have in my notes what she usually gets. So it's usually some form of, I liked iced coffee. I prefer iced coffee. So I would go with a caramel latte, something that's okay. sweet, but not too sweet, but sweet enough to where I just like, it's like candy almost. <laughs> Dude, nice. Halloween's around the corner coming up uh, next month. Uh, you, do you eat a lot of candy at all? Oh, yes. <laughs> Cake? What, what, cookies? What, 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 is, what are some of your favorite favorite snacks and stuff to kind of just, you know what? I want to pop on the couch. Amy, a little bit of this candy, a little bit of here. <laughs> yes, I'm a candy fanatic, actually. My roommates make fun of me. I'm huge, but the Walgreens has the four for four. So I go in there and get four boxes of candy and I'm like, a good mix of the sours and the sweets and then just yeah, everything. Not a big chocolate. I love okay, okay. strawberries, but, um, and then occasionally I'll, eat like a piece of chocolate. But when I have like a box of like Sour Patch Kids, I'll eat them in like- Oh chocolate. my God. Well, the problem is you sit there and eat them and the whole box is gone before yeah. you know it. like, oh well. Yeah. And that's when you look at your my roommate and I'm like, did you eat these? Like, where'd they all go? No way. Hey, exactly. <laughs> Finished off the bag of the box uh, yeah. before you know it too as well. Well, definitely I tell you the uh, single is mine to make across all the digital platforms and real tractors are green and definitely uh, she's going to be a superstar in the business. I believe in her and definitely her brand, her music and everything is about Anna McElroy and Anna, we appreciate the time here on the uh, podcast and definitely looking forward to catching up. Hopefully when uh, new material comes out, thanks so much for being with us. Hope you had a great time. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. This has been so much fun. Uh, I think y'all for you know, thinking of me and for supporting me and for allowing me to be a part of this. Um, this has been super fun. You got it. And we'll definitely do it again. No doubt. And Keith, thank you so much for uh, coordinating everything, my friend. And looking forward to uh, definitely some more shows coming up today and tomorrow. Hunter Thomas here in just a little bit. Josh Centerfield tomorrow. And then we did reschedule the show. Jeff Carson, you may know him from 90s country a little bit. He had a big number one with the car and another one, a uh, big one out there too as well. Not on your love. Jeff Carson next week. And if you missed anything this week, uh, always check out the website. Again, thanks to Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, the entire cast here at the Backstage Pass. We'll see you back in a little bit with Hunter Thomas here on the Backstage Pass, so stay tuned for more.